Welcome back to Cape Chronicle. I'm Mike Rennick. Heather Davis is the facility supervisor over at the uh, Hustlin' and Bustlin' Cape Sportsplex. Here to share her experiences about the Sportsplex and that impact on our community is Heather Davis. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Hustlin' and Bustlin', I mean, that is, that's an understatement, isn't it? That is a very accurate description, actually, <laughs> I feel like. I feel like that's my day-to-day my -day, yeah. uh, routine. But yes, we, we stay very busy and we are about to hit that point where we become extremely busy here in about a month. So. From, from a seasonal standpoint or are there some new things coming online? Um, from a seasonal standpoint, the fall is a little bit of our slower time if there is that at the okay. Sportsplex. Um, okay. We have a lot of big youth sports leagues in the fall, but our tournaments slow down and we're about to hit tournament season and we'll be off and running and it doesn't end for quite some time. Well, it seems like, I mean, if you, I mean, I've got kids in sports, so I've been there and experienced it, but um, if you don't have a reason to go there, I mean, you just drive by and it's like every, it's like every night that parking lot is packed. We, so when do you get a chance to take a breath? <laughs> we get that comment a lot. People just drive by and they're like, what in the world is going on there? There's so many people. And, and it could be anything from a, a weekend tournament with a hundred plus volleyball teams, or it could just be a Friday night of a youth basketball league or a youth volleyball league that there's just as many people in the parking lot then. So we, yeah. we try to stay busy throughout the entire year with something. How many years now has it been open? We opened in May of 2017, so about seven and a half wow. years. I know wow. it's, cra it's crazy. Sometimes I think, well, I can't be believe it's been that long ago, and then sometimes it feels like yesterday. Yeah, so. and have you, have you been at that location since then? Yes, I've been there okay. from the beginning. Wow, so you've, you've seen it all. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, so, okay, you said you're getting ready to start into this busy time period. So, are we talking like basketball tournaments, volleyball? Yeah, so everything. <laughs> we have a little bit of everything with tournaments, but our, our main tournaments are basketball and volleyball. Okay. Um, we really have a lot of volleyball in the winter. Um, when we first opened up, one of the keys for our facility was to really bring in tournaments in the winter um, because they want to get people in the hotels, you know, heads in beds um, in the winter especially. We're kind of filling those summer months already with a lot of baseball and softball um, down at the Shawnee Park Sports Complex, but they wanted to get some indoor um, tournaments going in the winter, and we've really succeeded with that with volleyball and basketball. We'll have tournaments uh, starting in December and basically running through the end of July consistently every weekend with the mm. exception of a couple of uh, holiday weekends, and that's about all that we have off. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, during COVID, um, all, you know, you guys were able to maintain tournaments and and, and those things in, in a safe manner, where you know some of our bordering states were not. And it, it seemed and I could be wrong about this, but it seems like I mean that really sh showed the sportsplex off to a lot of people. And it seems like you've been, just been slammed ever since then. I mean, is there any yeah. correlation there at all, do you think? <laughs> I, I believe so. I mean, we were busy before that. Yeah. Uh, but I think with um, we took a couple months off of not, not having anything there, you know, discuss how can we do this safely. It was very controversial for a lot of people, but yeah. we, we decided to open up, put in a lot of protocols um, mm -hmm. to do the best we could. Um, but what it did is it brought in a lot of new faces into our facility, not necessarily even new tournaments all the time, but new teams coming in for tournaments and then sharing that information with other teams. Um, I joked for a while that we were the Illinois Sportsplex because <laughs> Illinois basically shut down for months. Right. And we got everybody, I swear, that lived in Illinois to come into the Sportsplex. But what's happened is we've maintained a lot of those teams coming back for those same tournaments or new tournaments that have come in. So I do believe um, it broke some people, but it actually it wound up helping us in the end. So where do you see people coming from? You get, you get Memphis, mm. you get St. Louis. Yeah, um, pretty much any tournament we have routinely. Obviously, you have Missouri, Illinois, mm -hmm. um, Arkansas, Indiana, Western Kentucky, Western Tennessee. Okay. Um, but we get, we've had tournaments where we've had teams from 12, 10 to 12 states come in. Wow. So it really depends on the tournament, but definitely within about a three hour radius, we're getting teams consistently from those areas. And the tournaments, but then you obviously, as you mentioned, you have all the youth leagues. Oh, yeah. You got the, you know, the indoor <laughs> soccer, you got the basketball. Yes, we have to obviously serve the local community as right. well. And it, we try to do about a half and half thing, weekends, try to do tournaments, bringing those people from outside of our area 
but during the week we really try to focus on our local community um, especially the youth but also the adults we run adult leagues as well but we run everything from basketball and volleyball to flag football soccer um, we also do a lot of rentals um, for you know local mm -hmm. organizations club teams even schools come in and, and rent from us a lot too when their gyms aren't available or it's raining or it's cold outside and they need a field mm -hmm. um, so we rent a lot to them as well I've got an 11 year old daughter and she plays in one of the youth leagues and mm -hmm when she gets to play at the sportsplex. You know, it's like it's like playing, you know, playing at Bush Stadium or, right. play, you know, fill in the blank, you know, <laughs> stadium to be able to go out there. You guys have kept that yeah. place in great shape. We really try hard to to maintain it. We, we love when people walk in and they're like, this just opened like in the last year because yeah. we, we really focus on that and trying to keep it nice and clean and up to date and well maintained at all times. Uh, talked about all the people that come into town. Uh, you you, oh, yeah. you use the phrase heads and beds. Yes. Uh, there's a hotel popping up, uh, probably almost done, uh, right yes. in front of the sportsplex. You got, you know, you got uh, a gas station, uh, I guess a potential car dealership going in. So mm -hmm. things are starting to grow around uh, the sportsplex. Uh, and that's obviously because the impact that, 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 you know, those attendees have on the area. Right, yeah, I mean, definitely the growth um, at our facility has definitely helped in that uh, that area there, but also we've, we've had the issue of not having enough hotel rooms, um, so it's a reason for even some of the other new hotels that have come in on in the last year or so. Um, we've had people staying in Perryville and Sykeston, obviously Jackson's right across the interstate from us, so sure. uh, we're trying to get it, you know, we love that they're staying there, but we'd like to get them in Cape Girardeau. Um, if possible as well and so but we filled up all those hotel rooms which is a good problem to have so hopefully we'll see some more hotels well, popping and, up. <laughs> and to your point I mean it's it's it benefits Cape and really the region I mean it's yes. it's kind of a, it's a regional hub for sports so um, you know that's that's a good problem to have oh, yeah. um, and as we as we move forward here um, Good luck with that uh, that busy time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> get, a, get a little breath, and then and then and then here come the here come the tournaments. So and congratulations. I mean, to to have been there again from the beginning. I know there's there's ups and downs with the facility like that, mm -hmm. but uh, you've been able to uh, take it to, to great heights and, and and keep it pristine. And, and congratulations to you and your team. I appreciate that. Yeah. I like said yeah. we. We work hard and we just love to see the kids come in smiling faces no matter where they're from. Um, it's really, I love the youth sports aspect of it. So I'm just glad that we can provide that for the community. All right. Thank you, Heather. Thank you so much for joining us today for Cape Chronicle. The program is a collaboration among the Department of Mass Media at SEMO, the City of Cape Girardeau and River Radio. Our executive producer is Anthony Shear. I'm Mike Rennick. Thank you for watching.